In Siege, the attachments you use can be the difference between you winning and losing a gunfight. If you're a new player, you have no idea what attachments do, because Ubisoft doesn't explain their exact functions in-game. If you want to learn that, you have to visit about a dozen wiki pages, piece together all the information, and then compare them on each weapon to find the best combo. Or you can come here and watch this video where I explain each function of each attachment and the general consensus on how those should be used. Let's start off with the simplest attachments, weapon sites. Weapon sites are obviously there to help you find your targets. Every site has its advantages and disadvantages. This is housing size, reticle clarity, optical zoom, etc, etc. At the end of the day, your choice of site is going to be personal preference, but I have a couple tips that can help to guide that. On operators where you're expecting to play vertically, lower magnification scopes are superior. The zoom and FOV reduction will tunnel vision you to a smaller portion of floor or ceiling in the situation where you want to be able to see the bigger picture. The 1.5x is considered the jack of all trades and excels in almost every scenario, but each scope has its own merits. The last remark I'll make on scopes is that while I don't make recoil harder, any magnification will increase the visual effects of recoil. If you're running a 2.5x scope, recoil will visually appear 2.5 times more intense. For many people who react visually to recoil, this can make the ACOG seem far harder to control than the 1x scopes. If you're struggling with recoil, practice using the 1x scopes before moving up. Next we have the grips. There are only two options for this, so they're pretty simple. Vertical and angled grip serve two distinct purposes. The first reduces vertical recoil, and the second reduces the time it takes to aim down sights. The vertical grip reduces only vertical recoil by 25%, and the angled grip reduces ADS time by approximately 40%. In my experience, vertical grip tends to be detrimental in shooting back at enemies. If someone peeks you with your gun down, the additional time it takes to scope in will often mean you lose the fight. Running angled grip reduces the severity of this, and most guns are controllable without that additional 25% reduction. If you truly struggle with recoil, you can use vertical grip, but realistically, if you can run angled grip, you should be running it. Laser sights are pretty easy to understand. It's a laser designator that's always on. It increases hipfire accuracy by 25% on all guns that it can be applied to. This is best on shotguns because it makes opening rotate holes and even getting kills with it far easier. The tighter shot grouping means you'll hit more pellets. The downside to the laser sight is that you'll always be giving off a laser where you're aiming. Enemies can pinpoint where you're holding from if you're not careful with your cross replacement. Shotguns should always have laser sights and some guns like the AK-12 with slow ADS times are also good with laser sight. Finally, we have barrel attachments. These are the most difficult to understand, and even though they've been simplified since launch, their exact functions still aren't known to most players. Throughout my own testing, and also what Rogue9 has posted in the past, from Ubisoft directly, we can figure out somewhat accurate numbers to guide our decision making in terms of barrels. I'll start with the easy ones first. Suppressors have gone the most recent rework, with a damage reduction that has now been simplified greatly. Suppressors will reduce the sound your gun makes, remove bullet tracers and threat indicators, these give away your location to enemies when shooting at them from a hidden position, and reduce damage by exactly 15%. In my opinion, this barrel is pretty much useless. You sacrifice damage in any sort of recoil reduction for the trade-off of being slightly quieter. Bullet tracers don't really do much, because if you're missing enough shots to be noticed by these tracers, you have bigger issues going on. The audio reduction isn't amazing, as it stands, you can be two or three rooms away and still hear someone with a suppressor if you're listening carefully, so the sound reduction isn't as good as it may seem. Extended barrel is another barrel that's considered to be pretty useless outside of very, very specific circumstances. Extended barrel doesn't affect recoil at all, but it reduces damage drop off by a small amount ranging from 15 to 20 percent. This barrel is only really good on guns like the P10 Roni, which have no recoil and low damage. Since you're missing out on a lot of damage in the first place with these guns, you definitely don't want to sacrifice any more due to damage drop off, so running extended barrel is viable. Otherwise, you'll want to run one of the next three. Muzzle brake is geared towards single shot weapons. It will reduce both first shot recoil and recentering time by 45%. Recentering time is the time it takes for your crosshair to reset to its initial position after firing. This obviously helps DMRs and pistols significantly because it speeds up how quickly you'll be able to line up shots. On automatic weapons, muzzle brake has a weird behavior that hasn't really been confirmed, but most people have noticed it. The first 6-10 to 10 bullets when using muzzle brake are extremely tightly grouped, meaning you'll have next to no horizontal sway. After these first few bullets, the muzzle brake doesn't really do anything except for improving that recentering time. Guns that have high first shot recoil, this includes DMRs, pistols, and guns like Bucks, C8, SFW, can benefit the most from muzzle brake. Flash hider reduces only vertical recoil, and it does so by roughly 20%. 
This is kind of like a vertical compression. It literally just squishes down the spray by 20% while not changing horizontal recoil at all. Flash Hider is super strong on pretty much every single gun, except for those who suffer from bad horizontal kicks. For that horizontal recoil, you want Compensator. Compensator's Flash is counterpart, reducing horizontal recoil by 25%. Again, it squishes the pattern horizontally, but doesn't change vertical recoil at all. The best guns to run Compensator on are going to be LMGs and LS Scorpion. Some arguments can be made about the AK-12 and L85 due to their random horizontal recoil, but that comes down to more personal preference. Those are all the attachments CJ has to offer. As a new player, I know these attachments can be extremely confusing, which is why I wanted to compile them all into this one video for easy access. Some of these figures come from my own testing, some of them come from Rogue Nine, and some of them come directly from Ubisoft. So just to be clear, I'm not claiming to have discovered all of these. I am the one who did the calculations for Flash Hider and Compensator, but other than that, these figures have been public knowledge just in various sources that people might not know about, so I wanted to compile them into one updated video. This video is accurate as of Operation Crystal Guard. If there are any updates, I'll make a new video covering it. And as always, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. Huge percentage of people are not subscribed, so if you're finding these videos helpful, please do so. Hope you guys have a good day, and I'll see you in the next one.